back to Reformer Solutions. In today's tutorial, we will be talking about um, properties of derivatives. In early on, we talked about finding derivatives using the first principles. And we came to find out that a function can be continuous at a particular point, but if there is a kink, we can't find a differentiable aspect of that word function. So we can generalize that continuity does not imply differentiability always but differentiability always implies what continuity if we can differentiate that function is continuous at that part but sometimes it will be continuous but not what differentiable so let's take some properties that we can use to compute derivatives without going through the first derivative principles so the first rule we'll be talking about or the first property is the power rule. The power rule. Now the power rule tries to tell us that when we have any function, let's say y equals x to the power n, and we want to find a derivative. What are the process that we pass through to get the derivative of y equals x to the power n? Now, the derivative of this function, we write it as y prime, meaning the first derivative is given by, we multiply the power by the expression here, okay, then we subtract one from the power, that way. So, to write this in an actual term, assuming we have um, y to be equal to h with the power, Six to find y prime that the first derivative we multiply h to the power six by the power which is six then we subtract one from the power then we have six h to the power of five so this becomes a first derivative okay so that's an example let's take another one which will be a little bit complex like this as we have y equals let's say 1 over x cubed how do we find the derivative of such a parent word rational function so here uh, y we can rewrite it in a linear form using indices so that we get h to the power minus 3 remember this from indices so now our uh, y prime that's first derivative becomes negative 3 by x to the power negative 3 minus what? 1. So that we get negative 3 x to the power minus 4. We becomes negative 3 over x to the power 4. Doing bad substitution using what in this. So we want to rewrite it in the original form. So that's it here. Yeah. So this becomes a first derivative. So that's how we find derivatives of rational forms. Also, when we have radical forms, let's see y equals square root of x. How do we find the derivative? First, we rewrite this in a linear form. We have y equals x to the power half. You know that square root can be written as the power of what half. So that we can now have our first derivative to be equal to half times x to the power half minus what? 1. Which gives us half x to the power negative half. Okay? So we rewrite this as 1 over 2x to the power half, which is also giving us 1 over 2 to the power square root of x we want to rewrite in the original form to the power half is what square root of x so this becomes our final derivative as simple as that okay so that's what the power rule is all about now let's talk about the second property that we can think of we call that the constant multiple the constant multiple 
glue. This tells us that when we have a function with a constant, let's say we have y to be equal to c x to the power a, where c is a constant, okay? c is a constant. We get our derivative by separating the constant out, okay? Then we differentiate the value of x here. So we have n times h to the power n minus 1, like we used to do for the power rule. So anytime we have a constant, we only separate the constant out and perform the power equation on the function. Then after that, we can continue with our simplification. So for example, assume we have y equals 8x cubed. What would be our first derivative? Taking our first derivative, we see that this x is a constant multiple. That means it's multiplying the x cube. So we factor that out or we separate it, then we differentiate the x cube so that we have 3x to the power 3 minus 1, like we used to do for the power rule. Then we further simplify to get to the power 2. Now we do our Simplification that we expand the bracket by multiplying it by what? 3. And what does 3a give us? Simply we have 2 of this is 16. So 16 we add 8 giving us 24. So we have 24x squared here to be our final derivative. Okay, so that's how we do it. Let's take another complex one. Um, let's say we have y equals 2 square root of x. Actually, we rewrite this as 2 x to the power half. So it becomes a constant multiple of that expression. So our first derivative becomes separating the two and differentiating the x to the power half. So we have half x half minus 1. We have to simplify the power half x minus what half. So we multiply two. We have 2 by half is 1. So we are actually getting x to the power minus half. Which is also 1 over x to the power half, which we simplify to get x to the power half given us square root of x. So our third derivative becomes 1 over square root of x. So this is what we term as the constant multiple. We will be ending the rules here in our next meeting. We will take other aspects of the properties. We meet again. Say goodbye.